<laughs> All right. Everybody enjoyed that, didn't you? Wish I could have seen it, but I don't know what's going on. All right, if you wouldn't stand with us, we'll continue to, to worship. <laughs>
What hope we hold is starly night. A king is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long we seek the light that leads to the Halloween manger ground. What fear we felt in the silent age for years can he be found but broken by a baby's cry rejoice in the Halloween major ground Emmanuel Emmanuel God Son of God, here born to bleed, a crown of thorns will pierce his brow. As we beheld this offering, exalted now the King of kings, praise God for the Halloween manger. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Johnny Maxwell, lead us in our offertory prayer, please, sir. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this another day that we've come to thy house and worship you. We thank you for the beauty in this day. Father, we ask you to come and, and dwell in us. Father, we ask you to be with Brother Don as, as you've, uh, he delivers the message that you've laid upon his heart. Father, may that we hear it and put it in our hearts and live by it. Father, would we ask your blessings upon the people who are unable to be here father for whatever the reason if it be sick father you dwell with them in your own special way father we ask you to lead god and direct us father in, in every aspect of our lives and our church father may that everything that we do glorify thy name yes. and father be with us as we celebrate this time of the year and that time is your birth of your son who came up in the cruel world ultimately to be crucified and die Father, we ask these things in thy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Over the skies of Bethlehem appeared 
the star while angels sang in lowly shepherds three wise men seek the truth they travel from afar hoping to find the child from heaven and falling on their knees they bow before shadow in your presence no more no man would dare to stand before your throne before the holy one of heaven it's only by your blood and it's only through your mercy Shepherds 
guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring in love the babe, the son of May. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. The this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him on the babe, the son of man. Thank you, Brother B.J. and choir and congregation. What a wonderful time we've had already in the house of the Lord. Get your Bibles and turn, if you will, in the book of Psalms, the Old Testament songbook of the saints of God, book of Psalms, 40th chapter of the book. Psalms chapter 40, and I'm going to begin reading with the first verse of the chapter, Psalms chapter 40, beginning in verse 1. I waited patiently, I waited patiently, for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Now the introduction to this psalm is the chief musician, a psalm of David. David is relaying his experience. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and established my going. He hath put a new song, he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and shall fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. I want to emphasize what he has to say here in the third verse. He hath put a new song, he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto the Lord our God. If I were to give a title for the message this morning, I would call it the new song of the saved. The new song of the saved. There's a popular song, and these are some of the words of it. It's beginning to look a, look a lot like Christmas. Well, from the weather last week in Tennessee, where we're at, it was cold and you needed your coat. This week, one week later, it's 70 degrees outside. So you never really know in Tennessee... Weather's always changing. It doesn't look so much like a snowy Christmas outside, but a warm time of the year. But it's Christmas time. Times are changing. Sometimes when time changes, it's not the better. As you drive around looking at the Christmas lights, be aware that there are many of them that have left the theme, the real theme and meaning of Christmas out of it. So from my standpoint, that change is not real good. I can remember a time when all the Christmas lights were either a manger scene, a decorated tree, or perhaps angels and camels, and I mean, it was just, it was all about Christmas. Christmas was about Christmas. It's the time when we celebrate the birth of the Savior of the world. But here at Corinth, here in Corinth, it not only looks a little like Christmas, and we're not yet into our Christmas decorations. We'll get there before long. But it sure is sounding a lot like Christmas at Corinth. It's sounding like Christmas at Corinth. I like to come a little early and listen to the choir sing. Boy, listen, we have a blessing in store for us. The sanctuary choir is going to be singing a new Christmas musical. And you're going to be able to enjoy it on December the 23rd. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. It'll be during the Sunday morning service on December the 23rd 
and you will greatly be blessed by the Christmas musical. The children's choir, oh, they've been working hard. I mean, these little fellas, when the handbell choir gets up here, we had handbells and a little more entertainment. We have exciting times around Corinth. These little fellas, they did a fantastic job this morning. The children's choir, they have been working so hard. They have been working so hard, practicing so diligently, getting ready to sing and bless our hearts on Sunday night, December the 9th. That's not far away. So it's beginning not only to look like Christmas, but it's also beginning to sound like Christmas. In fact, it's amazing to me how much of the Bible is about singing. Many of the great chapters in the Bible are songs of the ancients. In fact, the entire book of Psalms is one book in the Old Testament that is devoted entirely to be a song book for the saints of God of that generation and for ours. So today I bring you a message that I entitled The New Song of the Saved. Look again at what the psalmist David was saying here in Psalms chapter 40. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and he established my goings yet put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and shall fear, and shall trust in the Lord. You know what this experience is that David is writing about in Psalm chapter 40? I believe it's his own personal experience in salvation. I really do. I believe this is a personal experience in salvation. He describes that salvation experience in the second chapter. And remember what I said a while ago, that Christmas is a time when we celebrate the birth of the Savior of the world? This is David's salvation experience about 2,000 years prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus, or 1,000 years prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in Bethlehem of Judea. And in this, he describes what the Lord has done for him. In verse 2, he starts off, The Lord has brought me also out of a horrible pit. I don't know the kind of circumstances that David was in, but there's one thing about it in verse 1. He says, he inclined his ear unto me. Talking about the Lord. The Lord inclined his ear unto me. And the Lord heard my cry. If you're lost, if you're in a pit of sin, if you're in a problem with your life, there's one who has a listening ear. And my advice and the advice of the Psalms is, cry out to the Lord and the Lord will hear you. So when David was down in the low pits of experience of his life, David cried unto the Lord, and the Lord, the Savior, heard his cry. Now look what the Lord did for David. He said, the Lord heard me, the Lord was inclined to me, and brought me up out of a horrible pit. But not only brought him up, but he did something for him. Notice what he says in verse 2 of Psalm chapter 40. He said, my feet upon a rock. Now we know who the rock is in the Bible. When you read about the living rock in the Bible, the foundation stone of the Bible, you know what we're talking about? We're talking about the Jesus who was born in Bethlehem and lived a perfect life and died on the cross of Calvary, was buried in a barred tomb, was resurrected from the dead on the third day, ascended back after 40 days to sit out at the right hand of God, the Heavenly Father. He was that rock then. He is that rock now. You know we sing sometimes, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. David knew it in his life. David experienced it in his life. You can experience the same thing in your life. If you're in a horrible pit of sin, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. The Lord has a listening ear. He will be inclined to your cry. He'll hear your cry. He'll hear your voice. And He'll come to where you are to lift you up and to put you on solid ground, on a solid rock. This was David's experience. It can be your experience. And he also says in this verse that he establishes my G-O-I-N-G-S, goings, not just going. But the Lord establishes my goings. Life is never the same after Jesus saves you. Life is never the same after Jesus Christ becomes your Savior and your Lord. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of the Savior. Now, in the first verse of the chapter, it spells the word Lord, L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The listening ear of David's day was the Lord. We know him in the New Testament 
And His name is given to us in the New Testament. His name is Jesus Christ. He is our Savior and He is our Lord. I want to give you a little bit of the Christmas story right now, okay? To prove that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior, the one who was born in Bethlehem to be the Savior of the world in Matthew chapter 1, you have the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Joseph was engaged to Mary, and then he found out she was with child, and God sent an angel to comfort his heart. And in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, this angel told Joseph, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And here's why. Here's why you call him Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus Christ born, and we celebrate Christmas as a recognition of the day that Jesus Christ was born. Now, did David know him? Did David know the Lord? Yes, he did. Chapter 40, book of Psalms, verse 1, prior to his experience and salvation that is listed in the second verse of the chapter, David talks about the Lord. There's only one Lord. It's been that way in the Old Testament. It's that way in the New Testament. They didn't call him Jesus in the Old Testament. That name was revealed by the angel in the New Testament. But they called him by a variety of names. He was the pre-incarnate Lord. My Jesus has always been here. He spoke the world into existence. But in the fullness of time, he was born of a virgin named Mary. He was born to fulfill Bible prophecy in the city of Bethlehem. In fact, in his life, he fulfilled every single prophecy relating to his first coming during the course of his life. And on the cross of Calvary, he cried, it is finished. It was the fulfillment of all the prophecies relating to his life. Do you know him as your Savior David did in Psalms 40 verse 1? David said, I waited patiently for the Lord, the L-O-R-D, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the pre-incarnate Lord Jesus Christ. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And then in verse 2, he describes his salvation experience. Now in verse 3, he says he's put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. After salvation, after salvation, he says that God has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto the Lord our God. And many shall see it. You don't think about seeing a song, you hear about, think about hearing a song. But David said that folks will hear me sing and see my life and they too will come to trust the Lord as their Lord and their Savior. Now, I don't know everything that David sang before he came to the Lord and knew him personally in salvation. But I can assure you this, whenever he met the Lord in a real personal saving experience, and verse 2 is that experience of his conversion. After he met the Lord, his singing becomes new. His song is a new song. Now, whatever he's singing, he was quite a musician. I mean, from early on, the Bible describes him as playing a harp. And David writes so many of the songs in the book of Psalms, and there's a transition in his life, and that point was when the Lord came in and established him and pulled him out of the mire pit and put his feet on the solid rock, and from that point on, his life is never the same again. Why? Because he put a new song in my mouth. And he also says that many shall see it and trust in the Lord. His conversion, his conversion influenced others. I wonder how many are here today that if you gave your heart to Jesus, if you made that first move towards the Christ of Christmas to become your Savior and your Lord, I wonder if there are family members that would follow you. I wonder if they're neighbors. I wonder if they're acquaintances in the workplace. If you had the same experience of salvation that Jesus, that, that David had with Jesus in the Old Testament times, I wonder if there are others that would follow your example. And they too would come to give Christ their heart and their life. Well, you say, is there enough information in the Old Testament for a person 
like David to really understand the depth of the love that God had for him and the salvation that God provides? Oh, yeah. Many of you are following a guy from Israel by the name of Mir Safadi. Behold Israel, behold Israel. He made a statement the other day in one of the services where he's at. And by the way, you have been praying for him and his ministry and he's literally, it's amazing how God is using this man in all the many countries that he's getting into with a message of God's salvation through Jesus Christ. But in one of his messages, he made this statement. He said, I never read a New Testament until I got saved. Born in Israel, born a Jew, raised a Jew. All he had was the Old Testament. He said, we viewed the New Testament as some kind of different book from what we had. We thought it was just for folks that called themselves Christians. And then he said, I began to study the provinces in the Bible relating a person that would come. And when he began to try to decide and discover who that person could possibly be, there was only one person that fit that description and his name was Jesus of Nazareth. And reading the Old Testament, the prophecy of the Old Testament regarding the first coming of the Christ, he became a born again Christian, a Messianic Jew. Today, God is using him literally to influence lives and churches and countries around the world. After salvation, he says, he put a new song. He has put a new song in my mouth. Now, we got something to sing about. I mean, really, we got something to sing about. You know why we got something to sing about? Because when you're saved, you become a new creature. Not just a new creation, but literally you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's as if you're made all over again. Book of 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The sorrow of sin can be changed into the song of praise and victory by faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. We become new creatures. That's what's happened to the psalmist David. After the psalmist, David's life was so changed by the power of God, transforming power of God in salvation, that his life became an influence to others who saw him, and they too feared and trusted in the Lord. So whenever you're saved, you become a new creature. We have a new song because we are a new creature. We have a new song because we live under a brand new commandment. You worried about keeping the Ten Commandments? Don't worry about it, dear friend. Jesus kept them perfectly for you. He is, the, he is the perfect, sovereign Son of God who kept every commandment to absolute perfection. However, we've got a new commandment. You know what Jesus tells us? We can sing because we have a new commandment. In John chapter 13, verses 34 and verse 35, Jesus said a new, a new commandment. We are new creatures when you get saved. We also have a new commandment. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. 1 John 13 verse 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. How does the world know that we really are the children of God? They looked at David and saw him there was an influence. They should be able to look at the life of every believer and realize that we have been with Jesus, that He is our Savior, He is our Lord. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. I mean, Christmas is a time of giving, isn't it? I mean, we, we like to give gifts to our family and we like to reach out to the unfortunate at Christmas time. I mean, that's a good practice at Christmas to help those who are less fortunate than you are. But you know what? That is a Christian practice. 365 days out of every year. Seven days out of every week to demonstrate our love for other men because Christ first loved us. Why are teams in Belize, Central America? Because of the love of Jesus. Why do we have teams from Tennessee going to hurricane-stricken areas of Florida? Because we have a love for Jesus and we want to express that love and share that love. This is an obedience to the new commandment that we have. Then one more point that I want to make. Not only do we have a new song to sing because we are a new creature in Christ, we live under a new commandment. 
But look, folks, we're headed for a brand new place. We're headed for a brand new place. Jesus promised that he was going to go and prepare a place for us. I'm going to put up on the screen this verse of Scripture, Revelation 21, verse 2. Final book in the Bible. John's experiencing seeing the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, for your information and for your recommendation, if you want something that'll thrill you at Christmas time and all the rest of the year as well, read the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation to see the city, one of the cities that we're going to, to dwell in in eternity. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. We have a new commandment. We're headed for a brand new place. There's going to be a new heaven. There's going to be an absolutely brand new earth. And when I read about the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, I have never read about anything as beautiful as that city is. It is a city four square. If my math serves me right, that one city contains an area of a million four hundred and forty thousand square miles. Twelve gates. The gates are suspended on all kinds of precious stones. Streets are paved with absolute pure gold, clack unto clear glass. I've never read anything about any other place that is as big or as beautiful as the holy city of New Jerusalem. Folks, we got something to sing about. We got a new song because we're going to live, we're going to live in a very beautiful and wonderful and a brand new place. When, God, when David got saved in Psalms 40 verse 3, he said, The Lord put a new song in my mouth. He'll put a new song in your mouth if you'll give your heart to Jesus. Even praise unto our God, many shall see it, and fear and trust in the Lord. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord is your Savior and Lord, you've never received the greatest gift that's ever been given, the gift of God's Son as your Savior and as your Lord. You can see the evidence of the change that this Christ child has made in so many wonderful Christians near you and around you. Won't you experience what they experience? Won't you too trust in the Lord as your Lord? Concealed in the Old Testament, he called him Lord. But David knew him personally. Revealed in the New Testament, his name is Jesus. And you and I can know him as the Lord in our life. May we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the new song of the saved. And we know we got something to sing about. We can sing with the Old Testament saints because, Lord, we know that whether in the Old Testament or the New Testament or in our present day, Lord, there's coming a time when you're returning in the clouds of glory. And the saints of God are going to rise up to meet you in the air. We're going to have a great celebration, a great time of victory, Lord, and we're going to live forever and forever and forever in the place that you have prepared for us where there's no death, sorrow, separation, pain, or anguish. Lord, we long for and look forward to that glorious time. We celebrate your first coming at Christmas. We will celebrate your return in the clouds of glory. So Lord, I pray today if there's anybody on the sound of our voice who does not know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, may they come to know the same Lord that David knew, the same Lord that was born in Bethlehem, and the same Lord who died on the cross of Calvary and was raised the third day. Lord, I just pray today, if there's anybody here that does not know Jesus, may this be the day, the time, and the hour when they come to Him by simple trusting, believing faith to receive Him as Savior and as Lord in their life. You're in the life-transforming business, Lord. We give You praise and glory for what You've done for others and what You've done in our life. And may others today experience that same blessed hope in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together and sing a good hymn of invitation. Will you make that surrender to the Lord today? Will you surrender all to Him today? He stands with open and outstretched arms to receive you. 
He invites you to come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come without money and come without price. Will you come simply by faith? Will you do it today? Maybe there's others that have a burden on your heart. You just simply like to come to the altar to pray. This altar is always open. It's a good place to talk to the Lord. It's a good place to give your heart to the Lord. When you come today while we sing and while individuals are praying, pray for you and for your family to receive the greatest gift of all time, the gift of God's only begotten Son revealed at Christmas. Born as of a virgin, God came down from heaven to walk among men. To prove His love for every person. When you accept that love and receive that love, it can be yours today. It is free for the asking. Will you make that surrender today while we sing? One more verse. God moves on your heart. Will you respond today if there's a spiritual need in your life? Will you come? Maybe you're looking for a church hall, a place of fellowship and meaningful Christian service. We invite you to come. Join with us as we reach out around the world for the good news of Jesus Christ and His love for every person. Make that surrender to Jesus Christ today. He'll come in to become your Savior and become your Lord. Brother Ken Reed, lead us in our prayer of dismissal, please, sir.